to another Sunday School Short. I just try to keep this five to eight minutes. So like, subscribe, and share if this is a blessing to you. Ezekiel 9 through 12. I can't get into everything, so read God's Word. Be in God's Word. Get ahead of me. Get in the Proverbs, the Psalms, the New Testament. Uh, Ezekiel 9. Here, Google image this stuff because this is a lot of stuff, and you can get wrapped around the axle with a lot of this. So Google image uh, Ezekiel 9, 10, whatever you're reading. And remember, these are Ezekiel's visions. He's in Babylon. He's already been exiled in 597 B.C., and he is prophesying or having visions of the destruction of Jerusalem in 586 BC. So he's taking his own Zoom meeting, like we're in Zoom meetings here in uh, during the corona pandemic. Um, verse 1, chapter 9, Lord, the Lord says this, Bring on the men appointed to punish the city. Tell them to bring their weapons with them. Six men soon appear at the upper gate that faces the north with their weapons. With them is a man dressed in linen carrying a writer's case. All right. So if you look, remember back in um, like when they're building the ark and all that and they put it in the Holy of Holies. Okay. So the, the cherubim or the angels are the wings are pointing towards each other and it says that the you know the, the Lord dwelt there. So uh, same picture here. Cherubim are here. The glory of God rose up above the temple entrance here. And to the man in uh, linen, he says, Walk through Jerusalem, put a mark on the foreheads of those who weep for the, t the detestable sins of Jerusalem. This shows repentance and remorsefulness. Uh, shows a broken heart. This is similar to the mark that will be on the people that are destined for salvation in, in Revelation that it talks about. Counter to that is the mark of the beast, those destined for destruction. If you have the mark of salvation, you can't get the mark of the beast. So don't worry about that. To the six, he says, follow him. Uh, to the six, he says, follow him, talking of the, the man in linen. Follow this guy. Kill everyone whose forehead is not marked. Show no mercy, no pity. And this is like, again, uh, the, the mark in Revelation, but also the mark of the lamb's blood. Prior to the Exodus, like the night before the Exodus, they had to the pass over. The angel of death passed over the houses that were marked uh, with lamb's blood over their um, doorpost. Begin here at the temple. So they, the Lord tells them to begin here at the temple. So he kills the 70 leaders that we talked about in chapter 8. They were killed because they were uh, telling false lies and false uh, prophecies and such as that. Ezekiel was overwhelmed. He fell false face down. Will you wipe everyone out in Israel, it says. And the Lord says, Ju Israel and Judah are filled with sin and injustice. They say, the Lord doesn't see me, and we can't be foolish like that. Know that the Lord is everywhere, and he knows everything. The man in linen reported back to the Lord, and he said, I have done everything as you commanded. Verse 11. And then in chapter 10, uh, another vision from Ezekiel. Again, we see the blue throne as depicted in chapter 1 when we were talking about the cherubim uh, above a crystal surface above the heads of the cherubim so this is the glory of God that he's seen here God himself um, the Lord to the man in linen he says go between the whirling wheels beneath the cherubim these are the angels the the ones that we described in chapter 1 take a handful of burning coals and scatter them over the city. He did that. This is kind of like the purging of sin. Uh, to the linen, the, so the linen went to the south end of the temple, uh, and the glory of the God, the glory of God, which was a cloud, filled the inner courtyard, and then again over the door of the temple itself, and then the the, the courtyard gleamed brightly. It says. And he requests the man in linen to get more burning coals. Uh, both the cherubim uh, and the wheels themselves. Ezekiel is just giving a further description. Ezekiel, uh, the cherubim and the wheels were covered with eyes. And this is similar to Revelation as well. Verse 15. These were the same living beings I had seen beside the Kibar River, and again, chapter 1 of Ezekiel, goes on to talk about their looks and how they move. Again, Google image this stuff. Whatever chapter we're working in, Google image Ezekiel 10, and it'll show you, should show you, a picture of what that looks like. 
Then the glory of the God moved out from the door of the temple and hovered over the cherubim. And around 19, it says something like this, cherubim and the glory of God above them flew out of the east gate of the temple. 11, 12, Ezekiel 11 and 12. Remember, Ezekiel is in Babylon, but again, he's on another Zoom meeting. The Lord takes him to the east gate of the Lord's temple there in Jerusalem. Uh, this isn't the building itself. I used to always think when it said east gate or entrance, it was always the building itself. But no, this is a courtyard, the temple mount itself. I didn't realize that until I went to Israel. Uh, he sees, saw 25 of Israel's leaders there. The Spirit said, These are the men who are planning evil and giving wicked counsel to the city. The Lord says to Ezekiel, Tell the people this. I know what you're saying, and I know every thought that comes into your minds. Verse 5, I will bring on you the sword of war you have greatly feared. Verse 8, and it continues with that similar wording. As Ezekiel is prophesying all this, one of the leaders, uh, Palatia, drops dead right there in front of Ezekiel. And he says, are you going to kill, he says to God, are you going to kill everyone in Israel? He's pleading out. Um, the Lord now tells Ezekiel to speak to the exiles who's he, who he's there with in Babylon. I will gather you back from the nations where uh, you've been scattered. And in 19, I will give you a singleness of heart and put a new spirit within them. And in 20, uh, they will truly be my people and I will be them, my God. And that singleness of heart, that new spirit. Man, we got that. If you got the Bible, you got Jesus inside of you, you have the new spirit, the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Then uh, cherubim and the glory of God leave the city. The spirit of God carries Ezekiel back to Babylon and he told exiles everything the Lord had shown him. Um, and this is God using Ezekiel to start a revival. Let's pray for revival in me first. Pray for revival in yourself. Pray for revival in America and around the world. Ezekiel 12. Rem uh, people have eyes, but they can't see. Go, and he tells Ezekiel, go and pack what exiles would normally carry. Leave, and then leave. Um, do this as the people are watching. Dig a hole through the wall and go through it. Uh, lift the pack, carry it away, cover your face. He did all that stuff. Next morning, leave in the night. Uh, the next morning, if they ask, what's the meaning of all this? Uh, the L Lord tells Ezekiel to tell the people, hey, this is what's going to happen to Judah and to King Zedekiah, who is the last king. He's the current king as Ezekiel is already in captivity, and he reigns through the ultimate end of Jerusalem and Judah in 586. He's the last king. Uh, if you remember Jeremiah, that's exactly what happened to King Zedekiah. Um, and it goes on to talk about an old proverb. Uh, people are saying, old proverb, time passes and prophecies come to nothing. The Lord says, I am going to do away with this. The new proverb is going to be, the time has come for every prophecy to be fulfilled. And he goes on to say, this will happen in your lifetime. Let's don't wait for punishment. Let's don't wait for discipline. Let's run to Jesus Run to God's word. Know that um, you've done bad things. I've done bad things. That's called sin. The Bible calls that sin. The penalty for sin is the death penalty. We're going to die physically, but also spiritually, being separated from God forever. All right? But before we were made right, before we got ourselves right, Christ died for you. The Bible says, before you could get yourself together, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Okay? And so if you believe that... Uh, in your heart and you confess it with your mouth you're made right with God again and I just pray that this is a blessing to you share it with somebody God bless you like subscribe and share